Oh, this, this guy can? Yeah. Right. can. Firebase news tonight. This pattern you're using in Firebase might be killing you tonight at 11. That's Firebase number 11. Take one for her. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase, the show where we answer all of your Firebase-related questions. And just as a reminder to you that we're having a super duper awesome Firebase Developer Summit in Berlin on November 7th. There's gonna be Firebase team members there and we have exciting product updates for you. Make sure to stay tuned and you can check out the link in the description for more. I'm now adequately caffeinated, so let's answer some questions. Oh, it's a question. This question comes from Sander on Twitter, and Sander asks, since when does Firebase hosting support HDB2? And Sander, you can use HDB2 today. For those of you who don't know what HDB2 is, it is the new version of the HTTP protocol, and it has a lot of seriously awesome benefits. One of them is the fact that you can request multiple things over one connection, which is a huge upgrade over HTTP1, where you need one connection per request, and that really speeds up your website. And another thing that Firebase hosting supports is also HTTP2 push. What HTTP2 push allows you to do is to proactively push assets down to the browser cache. So when the web page loads, it's already in there and it doesn't have to go out and make the load on the server. And this seriously can increase the load time of your web page. So Sander, if you want to get started with Firebase hosting and HTTP2, you can do that today. Check out our blog post. The link is in the description. Great question. Hey, let's go answer another question. I mean, to do a shake and smile for Gabe. He's not here, but... Danielle on Twitter asks, is there a way to link a transaction event with the products added to the cart in Firebase Analytics? Well, Danielle, you can log those parameters in the e-commerce purchase event. But for now, BigQuery is really the only way you can get reporting on it. But rest assured, we are working hard on making the Firebase console better for that in the future. And if you want to learn more about BigQuery and Firebase Analytics, you should check out a blog post by Google Cloud developer advocate Sarah Robinson, who helps you learn how you can use BigQuery and Google Analytics to better understand the data in your app. The link for that is in the description. Great question, Danielle. I have... Uh question to answer. Roni asks, is calling the database observer over and over again on the server side a good idea? And Roni, yes, it is a good idea and it's totally expected. Using the real-time database on the server is really, really powerful. If you want to connect out to your own backend or if you want to do a custom long-living process, the real-time database SDK on the server is the choice for you. Let's take a look at some code right here. So right here, what we're doing is, is we're gonna build a chat app where we want to translate messages to another language. So right here, the first thing we're doing is, is we're getting the node module that allows us to integrate with Google Translate. And then on the next two lines, we're going to create references to a list of messages in our database. So the first one is a list of English messages and the second one is a list of Spanish messages. What we wanna do is we wanna create a real-time observer for whenever a new English message is added. So we can do the on child added event for our English messages ref. And every single time we get a new message, we'll unwrap the snapshot and we'll pass its value into the Google Translate API. And then after the Google Translate API does its business, it spits us out the translated messages. So we can just push that to the Spanish messages list. And this will work every single time someone adds a new message to the list. Yes, Roni, it's totally fine to have the observer called over and over again. And it's also completely expected. If you want to learn more about using the real-time database SDK on the server, check Check out the link to our documentation that will help you get started. Great question, Roni. Acting! The people of this city need me to answer their questions. Cat asks, hey, hashtag ask Firebase, what are the benefits of passing an activity to a success listener on a task that's returned from a Firebase API? Well, Kat, you would pass that activity to the success listener because when a user leaves the activity, it automatically gets unregistered for you. And that means you don't have to do anything, which is awesome. What this does is, is this helps prevent activity leaks. This is a really great practice to follow. If you want to learn more about how you can do that with all the different Firebase SDKs, you should check out a blog post series called Being a Firebase Taskmaster, which is written by Doug Stevenson. And that's on the official Firebase blog. So if you want to read that, the link is in the description. So Kat, you pass the activity to the success listener and it automatically gets unregistered for you. Great question. So that's all the questions that we have this week. If you want your question answered, make sure to send us a tweet or go on YouTube or Stack Overflow. Just leave the 
hashtag ask Firebase, and we'll try to get to it. Also, remember that the Firebase Dev Summit in Berlin on November 7th is happening. Check out the link in the description for more. That's all for today. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our great Ask Firebase videos. I will see you all later. I don't know what I'm doing. Just work, I guess. Ah! Ah! That would have been so good! <laughs>